How did plants become meat-eating carnivores? When we talk about deadly predators, plants generally don't come to mind. In fact, they're normally at the bottom of the food chain, you would think, right? But have you ever watched a Venus flytrap snap shut on a frightened insect, eating the bug alive with no remorse using its deadly plant mouth? These scary plants can catch prey faster than you can blink. This is matter. And here's the scientific breakdown on how innocent little plants evolved into meat-eating carnivores. More than 35 million years ago, in a warm seaside forest somewhere near the Atlantic Ocean, the resin of an evergreen plant dripped onto the narrow, pointed leaves of a different plant species below. Over time, the spilled resin turned into amber, trapping small pieces of the latter plant species inside of the amber. These tiny leaf fragments belong to the same plant family as the genus Roradula we have today. They can only be found in a section of southwestern South Africa called the Cape Floristic region. And the most interesting fact is that they're carnivorous. That's right, they eat meat. This species of plant actually trap their prey, ensnared for the time being until the prey reaches its inevitable conclusion, getting swallowed up. And no matter how much the trapped prey may struggle and whine, it will meet its inevitable conclusion. So, were these tiny bits of leaves encased in amber for millions of years actually the first carnivorous plants? The answer is no, because carnivory has actually evolved at least nine times in plants, and in plants that are distantly related and only just recently acquired the ability to eat meat through similar genetic changes. But you're probably wondering, how and why does plant carnivory keep evolving? And remember, Carnivory just means the ability to eat meat. Well, it turns out that some plants can adapt in the most unexpected ways to make sure they flourish. Even when any of the basic things that most plants need to survive aren't there, like water, nutrients, and sunlight. Pretty fascinating, huh? I mean, these plants had no available sunlight, water, or nutrients. And instead of giving up and crumbling into an early death, their will to survive flourished. And because of that, they resorted to just eating other organisms to get their take of nutrients and water. Are you all getting as excited as me? I freaking love learning about carnivorous plants. Charles Darwin certainly admired these kinds of plants as well. He published an entire book about them in 1875, after spending more than 10 years trying to figure out exactly how they worked but it would probably take another hundred years or so before scientists would present the definition of what counts as a carnivorous plant that's often used today. There are basically two things that a plant has to do to be considered carnivorous. First, it has to have the ability to lure, catch, or digest its prey. The prey is usually insects and sometimes includes small vertebrates like salamanders. The northern pitcher plants have been observed consuming baby salamanders. Baby freaking salamanders, people. Guess they got tired of drinking and just decided to chew. What do you think? And second, it has to have the ability to take in nutrients from its dead prey, whether trapped inside it or on its surface. Also, I want to point out that it's not enough for the plant to just have defense mechanisms that can kill an animal that's trying to snack on it. It also has to get those animals nutrients. I wonder how much nutrition the plants are actually getting from the captured salamanders. Anyway, doing at least one of these things and absorbing the nutrients for its benefit makes a plant carnivorous. Carnivorous plants are found on every continent except Antarctica, and there are more than 800 species that meet the criteria for carnivory. Well, it depends on what definition of carnivory you're using. And these plants appear to have evolved between 95 million and 1.9 million years ago.
So how exactly did ancient non-carnivorous plants evolve into the most skillful green hunters on the planet? Well, the meat-eating shift goes back to the idea of the so-called convergent evolution. All these different species of carnivorous plants are responding to similar environmental pressures. They're generally found in wide, sunny places that have moist but nutrient-poor soils. Many of them live in wetlands that have saturated and acidic soils. Just like any other plant, it has to get nitrogen and phosphorus somehow. So what happens when a carnivorous plant is placed in a nutrient-rich soil? Hmm. It might seem odd that soil can actually be too rich for a carnivorous plant, don't you think? But because carnivorous plants evolved initially to deal with acidic and nutrient-deficient soils, it will amazingly stop being carnivorous if the soil is nutrient-rich enough, at least temporarily. Doesn't that just blow your mind? It's like when the plants no longer have a reason to eat other animals anymore. They just stop eating them. Does that mean plants are reasonable creatures with a conscience? Here's a better question. Could you stop eating meat instantly if you could get your nutrients from other sources? Because plants make the shift instantly. Seems like plants have better self-control than most of us, which is another reason I love learning about plants. And as for what plant was the first to evolve into a carnivore, well, no one really knows for sure. So the jury is still out on these early carnivorous plants, leaving us with just the leaf fragments of that Roradula preserved in amber as the oldest undisputed evidence. Ultimately, carnivorous plants teach us that all living beings in nature live together and are dependent on each other, finding similar solutions to the same problem, how to survive. But are carnivorous plants dangerous to humans? The answer is, not really. Some carnivorous plants have trapped reptiles like small frogs and mammals like rats on accident. The problem with trapping larger prey than intended is that carnivorous plants can only digest food up to a certain size. So all of the human-eating plant horror films and science fiction stories are all fictional and over-exaggerated. So you don't have anything to worry about. Trust us. But to only think of plants as boring green things that we use for food and decoration is rather foolish. You might want to think again. But then again, carnivorous plants are not really dangerous to humans to any extent. In fact, drinking your favorite fizzy drink, Coca-Cola every day, is the real danger. But that's a story for another episode of Matter. All right, so that's the end of our story today. Did you have a lot of fun learning about how amazing plants are? Well, if you did have fun learning in an awesome way with awesome visuals, then you're one of us. So definitely be sure to subscribe to our channel and leave us a comment on your favorite species of plant. Whoever blows our mind with another amazing plant species will get featured on our next video and we'll make sure to give you a shout out. We may not be the biggest channel around, but we care about every single one of our subscribers. We take your entertainment and education very seriously so show us some love and hit that like button and tune in next time for more amazing factual stories. Please don't forget to click the bell icon to get new video updates the second we release a new video. Until next time.